Hi. So a couple of months ago, I started to go on TikTok because I am just that desperate. No, but really I thought it could be cool to try see if I could reach a new audience, if I could get more people involved in sustainability in every shape, way or form. And I honestly really like the whole lip syncing idea and how you can also kind of use that to be informative. So I tried that and I made a TikTok about some of the most like common anti-vegan arguments. And uh, let's just say that the comment section was interesting. But before we get started, this video has a sponsor. Da, 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 da. <gasps> okay. This video is sponsored by Skillshare and uh, I have been partnering up with Skillshare quite a few times at this moment and it's a really, really great partner to have, especially when it comes to curiosity and learning new skills and generally just educating yourself on topics that you didn't really know a lot about. Because Skillshare is an online learning community with tons of different courses. You can learn so many different things from cooking to photography and creative writing and management and all this kind of stuff and it's super super inspirational and I have been using Skillshare personally to touch up on some vegan cooking skills that I've really wanted to improve recently and it's been amazing for that so you can find tons of vegan recipes and cooking techniques and skills and I really really appreciate it you can also use the link down below both in the comments and in the description and the first 1000 people to sign up using that link will get two months of premium Skillshare for free girl. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now I want to show you what people are writing to me on TikTok. So I have them here on my phone. The first one is your most important organ needs meat. Your brain. Look it up. And you know what? I did. That our brain needs meat is a simplification of the truth because our brain needs something that meat contains, which is fat. And fat you can get from a lot of different places that is not animal derived. You can get fat from a lot of places that has nothing to do with animals. You can get fat from avocado, from nuts, from seeds and from oils. There's tons of places where you can get fat that is much healthier than from meat because yeah, you do need some of the things that are inside the meat but it is wrapped in a lot of stuff that we have absolutely no use for and that is not the case with a lot of plant-based products but i also really want to expand on this a little bit a study from harvard actually showed that the fats derived from red meat and butter has a harmful effect on brain and heart health and from a survey involving 6,000 participants it showed that those who get their fats from unsaturated sources like olive oil and nuts and avocado and seeds had better memory and cognitive function whereas those who regularly have had heavy animal products like beef and butter had the lowest cognitive function and the most problem with memory. The point is here that you can get your fats from plant-based sources. Other animal products are also significantly healthier for your body than red meat or dairy. Um, but generally this was just a point to prove that it can be done without the animals at all. It's much more sustainable when it's done without the animals. And yeah, it's just simply perfectly healthy. And the fact that you need meat for your heart and for your brain is not a thing. You need fats. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So one of the reasons our ancestors' brains developed was because they started to cook meat and eat it. An increase in the early human brain size started around 1.8 million years ago, but not for the reasons you might think. Homo erectus, which is considered to be the first modern human, learned to cook and over a period of 600,000 years their brain size doubled. Many studies actually show that it was not the fact that early humans learned how to cook meat that made their brains increase and give us our cognitive function and all this complexity that we have today. It was the sheer fact that they learned to cook, period. And learning to cook for early humans also involved eating a lot of grains and a lot of potatoes and generally a lot of things that would otherwise have taken the body way too much energy to consume and to digest. And cooked plant-based foods is just as much a part of that milestone as cooking meat is. The human body can absorb calories much more easily when they are cooked. And studies show that around the time humans started to cook, our brain increased and our body mass and teeth size decreased. 
Eating grass and raw vegetables required more energy to obtain and consume than cooked foods. Also, animals like gorillas eat a primarily raw plant-based diet, and although they have massive bodies, their brains have fewer neurons than ours. And that's because early humans learned to optimize calorie intakes from cooked potatoes and grains and greens and yes, also meat, but a lot of people today are not dependent upon survival and we can thrive, not just survive. Notice how I say a lot of people today because there is people still that are battling famine and starvation and that's obviously a completely different ballpark. I'm just making the rude assumption here that the person who actually commented this is not in that demographic and has indeed the opportunity to choose at least a little bit, like at least a little bit. And although early humans did eat meat, it will still not justify the overconsumption of meat today. Woo hoo hoo! Lol, animals eat animals, and if everyone stopped eating meat, cows and pigs would overpopulate, can't change it, F vegans. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack here. I am going to save the animals eat animals until later, not do that right now, and focus more on the then animals would overpopulate the earth kind of argument and let's talk a little bit about that because that is definitely also one of the more common ones. First of all, this argument assumes that everyone on earth would go vegan overnight and that is not necessarily how anything has ever gone down ever and not necessarily how I think veganism is going to go down in general but we see more and more people every year choosing plant-based products either long-term or short-term or simply just for trying it, simply trying it out and experimenting with it or going all the way but we see more and more people gravitating towards plant-based products rather than animal products so what is going to happen ideally it's not that we all wake up tomorrow and then we don't need animals and we're just going to let them out into nature and let them trample our yards completely to shame no i think it's going to be a gradual shift in the way that we consume products because the thing is these animals are not naturally there we bred them into existence and if we stop paying the people that breed them to breed more of them then they're going to breed less of them it is supply and demand as it is with any other business so if less consumers are paying for a product, less of that product is going to exist in the world. So no, cows and pigs are not going to overpopulate our planet. Today, more than 200 million land animals are slaughtered every single day. And if we include fish and hunting, it's closer to 3 billion animals. That means over 72 billion land animals are sent to slaughter every single year. At 1.2 trillion sea animals are killed every single year. We see ocean life rehabilitating itself completely if we decrease the amount of fishing that we do in certain areas. Ocean health increases tremendously if we stop fishing. And we have seen that in areas where fishing has been made illegal or been decreased significantly. Also remember, in animal agriculture, the animals are not breeding themselves. They are inseminated with human interference. The bottom line is, it's a gradual change and at no point in time are 70 billion animals going to be trampling into your yard. Hello. Okay, 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 okay. Nearly 80% of vegans die before time because they don't get the proteins and vitamins their body needs. Just saying, lol. And that is awful. 80% of vegans die before time? Why aren't we as a community talking about this more? Because that is insane. Like, oh my god. And that is coming from this amazing peer-reviewed article based on thorough research and studies involving many participants, I guess. Because studies show that vegans and generally people who eat more plant-based, including vegetarians, have longer lifespans than people who eat meat because a lot of meat is directly related to a lot of heart disease. So if you are vegan or if you're transitioning into veganism, of course you need to educate yourself upon nutrition and what your body actually needs. But again, I would say that for everyone and a lot of people who also eat meat are also deficient in a lot of different things and often it's actually more likely to be the case if you eat a conventional diet because you won't then you won't ever really feel the need to research anything and that can lead to like an iron deficiency or zinc deficiency stuff like that but i know for a fact that many vegans are researching thoroughly to find out okay what is it my body needs where do i get it how often do i need it the only thing you need as a supplement as a vegan is b12 because b12 is a bacteria that normally comes from dirt and because we are cleaning our vegetables a lot and because generally we have very very high standards for food hygiene we don't get those bacteria 
uh, when we buy food from the grocery store. And animals in animal agriculture actually getting B12 supplements fed to them because they are also not necessarily outside digging around in the dirt. So sometimes it's a question of whether you have to take the pill or the animal you're eating is taking the pill. Da 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 da! Okay, but canine teeth are literally for eating meat. I'm just gonna show you mine for reference. Canine teeth are these ones, yes, right here. They are not for tearing flesh. I could make the argument that human canine teeth looks absolutely nothing like a lion's or a dog's, but gorillas also have massive canine teeth and they live, as we know, on a primarily plant-based diet. Actually, all primates have canine teeth no matter what diet they have. Predators' canine teeth, like the really long, really pointy boys, are used to grab hold of prey and then tear their flesh apart. You will see that lions often hunt like claws and mouth first because their really, really long canine teeth can sort of sink into the flesh and hold the prey like close to them. I wouldn't necessarily try my luck with that, with these small boys. For the predatory purpose, humans' canine teeth are basically worthless. They serve quite a different purpose actually. If our teeth were made for, you know, tearing flesh, that doesn't really go very well together with the fact that our stomachs can't digest blood. So <laughs> our canine teeth, these small stubbly boys, are actually much more efficient at breaking nuts, eating seeds and tearing fruit apart than tearing flesh apart. And that is actually what they are used for. We can open nuts and seeds and vegetables. Now we are back again with the some animals eat meat and they are respected, some animals don't eat meat, they are respected. Let's have it the same way with humans. I think it's wrong to justify humans doing something based on the fact that an animal does it as well. Mostly because that we have moral agency as the only animal on the planet, which means that we can think about, oh, is this right or is this wrong? And as we know, because I am sitting right here, just like a lot of other vegans are, that our bodies can actually thrive and survive without animal products. So eating it, even though that it's wrong or even though it's super unsustainable, even though it's kind of killing our planet, the amount of animals that we slaughter are so far beyond any natural phenomena or any other animal on the planet that those two are just not equal whatsoever. So you can't really justify doing something because an animal does it. I have nothing against vegans as long as they don't mess with what I eat or what I do. Plants do have a response to being hurt and it might be that they feel. First of all, um, something that I've heard quite a lot is that as a vegan you shouldn't eat plants because plants actually have feelings and uh, you don't want to eat anything with feelings, so therefore you cannot eat plants either. But that is, of course, crazy talk. And if that was something the people who are saying this actually meant, then they wouldn't eat meat either, because more plants go into feeding animals than goes into feeding humans. So more plants are killed, more plants are dying uh, when we eat animal products than when we just eat the plants. Because you know what? 72 billion animals do require a lot of food and we grow that food on land that we could have used to grow plants to feed people and then we would have used a lot less of that land because again feeding a cow requires more than feeding me. Don't dare say it. Also, if you do care about the feelings of plants and the lives of plants, you wouldn't support animal agriculture either because a lot of deforestation, the majority of deforestation today is caused by animal agriculture because we need to clear a lot of land to grow more food for more animals. So pain is a biological response that is coming through your nerves from your brain telling you to get out of a dangerous situation. It's telling your body to move. For instance, if you put your hand over a candle, it's going to hurt if the candle is lit. Um, and then you are going to pull your hand towards yourself because that is like the instant reaction. That is just your brain telling you, oh, oh, this might kill you if you keep doing this. So perhaps move away from the dangerous situation. And see, the thing is, Plants can't really move away from a dangerous situation, so pain wouldn't really make sense as a biological response. It is true that plants can do a lot of remarkable and amazing things, but don't get that confused with feeling pain when they are consumed. Actually, a lot of plants depend on being consumed if, you want, if they want to, you know, spread their seed. It sounds awful when I say it, but in the, like this is most literal, literal meaning of spreading the seed. A lot of plants, like vegetables, fruits, stuff like that, they are dependent upon 
animals and humans and you know whatever I guess in nature if you speak directly in nature it's animals uh, eating fruit and veg and then all the tiny small seeds inside are going to be pooped out and that poop around the seed will fertilize it and a new plant will grow. How would that work if the plant felt pain from being consumed? It doesn't serve a biological purpose and there's really no evidence that plants feel pain. There are plenty of evidence that plants communicate with each other and have biological responses, but not that one of those is pain. So, and even if they did feel pain, even if we found out that plants were sentient, how come that like theory or that like possibility becomes a justification for killing something that we are 100% sure is sentient and has feelings and can feel pain? Oh, ho, ho. we are on top of the food chain, which gives us all the right in the world to kill 72 billion animals a year. I hear this argument quite a lot and I have been saying this argument on YouTube in my previous years as well. So I really want to show you where I am with this sentiment uh, now, because I think it's really, really important. Okay, this notion assumes that the way we are eating meat today is natural, but there's absolutely nothing natural about animal agriculture, and there's absolutely nothing natural about factory farming. The factory farming as a concept is also not that old, but no matter what we believe, I don't think we can regard the way that we consume products as a part of a natural world, and therefore not at as part of a natural food chain either. Whether or not we belong in the top of the food chain, in my opinion, is completely irrelevant to how we produce meat today because it's unsustainable. And just for the record, I don't think we belong in the top of the food chain because, hey, fight a lion. <laughs> and lastly, let's just eat what we want and not judge each other. Well, I am both on board and not on board with this statement. Of course, we should not be complete dicks to each other. That makes absolutely no sense and no one has ever changed the world antagonizing everyone else in it. So obviously that is not the way forward. I know that there are in fact some people within any movement, I guess, that is not necessarily communicating in the most respectful and the most efficient way. I too, before going vegan, were subject to some criticism that came out very judgy and very like just just kind of mean-spirited and that is definitely, definitely uncomfortable. Not every kind of criticism, not every kind of talking about something, not every conversation uh, where two people disagree is judgmental. You can disagree without being judgmental towards each other and I definitely think that just objectively talking about how animal agriculture objectively is unsustainable and how plant-based agriculture is objectively more sustainable can also be interpreted by some people as judgy and that is not really my responsibility. I want to give you guys the facts to make the most sustainable and informed decisions that you can as consumers and for some people luckily it means going all the way and going vegan but for other people it means cutting down on meat or cutting down on some types of meat and then that is your starting point and that is also amazing if you want to know more about like that kind of ooh, i have a whole video about how i went vegan because that was a roller coaster ride and lots of stuff happened and i know to not expect anything from other people that I do not or did not expect from myself. But I definitely think that when I talk about veganism or animal agriculture or any of these things, I am not intentionally being judgy because I don't think people who eat meat are bad or mean people. I I have another problem with people defending animal agriculture as though it's their best friend because that definitely also happens. I hope this adds some nuance to a debate that's really, really quickly going to turn into a you're a bad person for eating meat and I'm an amazing person for not eating meat because that is so not at all how we roll, yo. But we have to be critical towards the products that we use every single day. It is our duty as people of the planet to take good care of it. And that also comes with some unpleasant realizations about our own consumption of food and goods in general and it does come with some self-reflection and I know not everyone is super up for that but I definitely hope that if you watched until the end that you are up for that so you can educate yourself more in with the links in my description or I mean you can just go ahead and start right now I hope that this video made some sense I hope that you liked it and uh, I will see you guys in my next video take really good care of yourselves until then bye
Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!